Time, our greatest friend, our worst enemy. It is everywhere, and yet we cannot see it. We observe only its effects, the changes it leaves in its wake as it marches inexorably forward from one moment to the next, always advancing like some implacable army. Okay, enough poetry. Let's get serious. Time is at the very center of life and human experience. There is nothing with which we as human beings are more intimately acquainted. And yet, when we try to define time, to pin it down and clarify its exact nature, we find ourselves in difficulty. It's an elusive phenomenon. We can measure time, but when it comes to saying what time actually is, things are a bit trickier. One popular definition of time is that it's a dimension, the fourth dimension. There are the three spatial dimensions, length, breadth, and width, and then there's time. This idea probably sounds familiar, even commonplace, but that's only because we're living in the 21st century. If we were living in, say, 1915, the idea of time as a dimension would be new and exciting. For it was that year that a young Albert Einstein, while still working as a humble patent clerk, managed to publish some papers that did nothing short of shake the world of physics to its foundations. These papers showed that Isaac Newton, another scientist who had good hair, was wrong about time. According to Newton and his famous laws of motion, time is absolute. That is to say, it carries the universe along at a fixed rate. And as time passes, things happen. Ants build nests, civilizations rise and fall, stars implode and turn into black holes. But none of the many things that happen as time passes have any effect on time itself. In Newton's universe, time doesn't care about anything that happens in space. More precisely, it doesn't speed up or slow down, depending on the circumstances. Newton's notion of absolute time is pretty intuitive. You've probably had the experience of wishing you could slow down, speed up, or stop time altogether. Who hasn't? But sadly, when your flight's in 20 minutes and you've just got to get to the airport, you better hope for a delay. 20 minutes is 20 minutes, however you slice it. But that's not quite true, at least not according to Einstein's special theory of relativity, which tells us time can pass at different rates, depending on what you're doing, and more specifically, on how fast you're moving. This idea might sound strange, like the sort of thing you couldn't ever actually prove. However, amazingly enough, with the invention of atomic clocks, scientists were actually able to provide concrete evidence for Einstein's view. In one experiment conducted in the 1970s, scientists showed that less time passed for atomic clocks that were placed in an airplane and flown around at high speeds than atomic clocks that were left on the ground. The result of this experiment was unambiguous. The faster the clocks moved, the slower time moved for them. In other words, Usain Bolt might have taken only 9.58 seconds to run 100 meters, but it was a long 9.58 seconds. Nowadays, most physicists accept that Einstein was right about time. It's bendier than we thought, more relative. However, there's still no consensus about what time is exactly or even whether it exists. You don't need to be a PhD in physics or philosophy to understand why the experts find time to be such a puzzling, mysterious, and endlessly fascinating phenomenon. There are lots of things about time that make it special, not just another dimension. For instance, we can move freely around in space, going in any number of different possible directions, but we can't move around time in the same unfettered fashion. You could, at this very moment, go to any number of locations in space, the bathroom, the kitchen, Australia. The possibilities are endless, but you can't go anywhere you'd like in time, can you? You might really wish you could go back to some day from last week or last year or fast forward to some future date that you're eagerly anticipating, but you can't. Sadly, time travel's existence is confined to science fiction.
But if time is just another dimension, why can we only move through it in one direction? There's no arrow of space, so why is there an arrow of time? Perhaps the answer to this question is that the different parts of space are all equally real. Bathrooms, kitchens, Australia, <laughs> bathroom and kitchens in Australia, they all exist, but the different parts of time do not. They're not all equally real. In fact, only one small part of time exists, a tiny sliver known as the present. This is at least what proponents of a philosophical position known as presentism believe. If presentists are right, it explains why we don't have much of a choice when it comes to how we move through time. If the present is all that exists, we have to remain in the present, because there's nowhere else for us to be. And remaining in the present means moving from a past into a future, following time's forward-pointing arrow. Notice in answering one question, why our movement through time is more limited than our movement through space, we've raised another. Why is time structured so differently than space? If time is just another dimension, why is it that all of space is real, while only a small portion of time is? This question keeps physicists and philosophers busy. The thing is, it's not exactly clear what the present is, or how it relates to the past and the future. In fact, some even argue that the so-called present is nothing but an illusion. This idea, which is basically the opposite of presentism, is that the present is no more real than any other moment in time. Contrary to how it may seem, everything that happened in the past and everything that will happen in the future exist alongside what's happening in the so-called present. This view, often called eternalism, can be a little hard to wrap one's head around. According to eternalists, people who have died aren't gone. They still exist, just not now or any time in the future. Their existence is in another part of time than ours, the past. But that doesn't make that existence any less robust or real than ours. Sometimes, eternalist model of the universe is called the block universe. Because instead of picturing time as an arrow that takes the universe from one moment to the next, it pictures time as a stack of moments that form a big, four-dimensional block. We can think about this stack as a giant deck of cards, in which each card represents a particular moment of time. The cards all exist, and there is no special moment, no special card called the present, which does a better job of existing than the other moments. Moreover, when we cut the deck into a past and a future, there's nothing about the cards in the past to distinguish them from the cards in the future. They're all just moments, little slices of time. Einstein himself seems to have entertained this view, that the past, present and future are equally real, and thus not fundamentally different in the way we tend to assume. Consider this excerpt from a letter Einstein wrote to the family of his dear friend Michel Besso, shortly after Besso's passing. Now he, talking about Besso, has departed from this strange world a little ahead of me. That means nothing. For us believing physicists, the distinction between past, present and future only has the meaning of an illusion, though a persistent one. What Einstein is saying here is that we can't help but feel that the past is gone, that it is no more. However, if we look closely at what physics has to say, we realize that the past exists just as much as right now does, and that the future does too. Not all physicists agree with the idea that the past and future are just as real as the present. Indeed, eternalism remains a pretty controversial view. But the idea that the passage of time is an illusion isn't so easy to dismiss. What Einstein said about physics being on the side of eternalism could be said to be more true now than ever. Some physicists believe this at least. They argue that quantum mechanics has shown the arrow of time to be an illusion. This might come as a surprise, since the arrow of time seems so obvious. It's woven into our language, the way we talk about the past and future. We say the past is behind us, while the future lies ahead of us. Time's arrow is also reflected in our very brains, 
We remember the past, but not the future. But here's what's really wild. When we zoom in on the tiniest particles in existence, the arrow of time seems to break down. What this means is that quantum particles don't appear to move forward through time, out of a past and into a future. So if you watched a video of a quantum particle but played it in reverse, it would look no different than if you'd played it forwards. As crazy as this might sound, physicists agree that it's difficult to find evidence for the arrow of time in their most fundamental equations. And some physicists, like Carlo Rovelli, believe that quantum mechanics has shown the arrow of time to be an illusion. Just as Einstein said, Rovelli argues that the flow of time is something we experience on account of our perspective. Time is like color, something that exists in our minds and not the world itself. What do you think? Is time real? If so, what is it? Does it work the way we generally think it does? Share your thoughts on the video and the topic of time in the comment section below. We'd love to hear what you think. Thanks for taking the time, whatever that is, to watch this video. We appreciate your support for this channel.